Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to TEDx. Um, thank you for having me. So I'm going to talk to you today about social capital. You might be thinking to yourself, what actually is social capital? It's really about the power of connecting and relationships. And just by the fact that you are all here today means that you're interested in collaboration and connection. Uh, the reason, I'm going to tell you a little bit of the background, the reason that I became interested in this topic was when I was at Virgin America, obviously my job was to fly around the country a lot and to connect with people and talk to people. I ran the marketing department. But as a marketer, you need to know how people interact with your product. And so I had a habit of talking to every single person I met on a plane. Now, some of you might be flying with your headphones on, but for four years, I flew with my headphones off. And what I found was that I was meeting fascinating people. I met a concert violinist. I met an ecological adventurer who made a boat out of plastic bottles and, and sailed from here to Sydney. I met Googlers. I met venture capitalists, all because I was willing to connect with people and be open to the power of relationships. As Van was saying earlier in his speech, the power of community and bringing people together is so important not only for individuals, but also for businesses, for our, our companies. And I have been thinking a lot about the topic, and this starts at a very, very young age, this power and this need to connect. My daughter is 10. She's in fifth grade. And recently, she switched schools. She switched from a private school to a public school. And I'm sure a lot of you are parents out there. It's not an easy transition when you have a kid switching a school. And so every night, I've been sitting with her. I'm like, how's it going? And you know, are you making any friends? And she said, mom. It's actually really hard, and uh, you know, she was very teary, and I said, well, talk to your teacher about it. She said, Mom, I'm not going to talk to my teacher. You know everybody. You have to teach me how to make friends. <laughs> so I sat her down, and I said, well, here's a, couple, here's a couple tips for you. Don't be the tough girl. Be nice. Ask people questions about themselves, uh, and maybe we should plan a party. And then I tried one more thing. I, I looked at her, and I said, and we need to cut your bangs. And she said, she said, what? And I said, you need eye contact. And she said, mom, fifth graders don't care about eye contact. <laughs> that one didn't work. But what I was talking about was really removing all the barriers that are holding you back, right? And a lot of times it's hard. Even at, at an event like this, some of you probably came alone and you were thinking, who am I going to meet here? Who am I going to talk to? As Gary was saying, people have internet addiction, people may have shyness. Um, I've talked to a lot of people about this topic. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom has dyslexia. That was a barrier that he had to overcome. I'll give you a quick story about one of my past coworkers. I was hiking the other day with Nick and Jen. Nick was an intern for me about four years ago, and now he's up embedded in the Nike campus. I noticed as we were hiking, I thought, Nick looks good. What's going on? And so I said, you know, have you lost weight? He said, I'm doing PX90. I said, PX90, what the heck? And, you know, I see all these infomercials, the before and after pictures. And like a good before and after picture disciple, Nick pulled out his phone. He said, I've lost 23 pounds. I was like, oh, my God. And he said, do you want me to take off my shirt? And I said, no, no, keep your shirt on. But I said, Nick, how? How has that impacted you know, your work and, and what's going on in your life? And he said, I am so much more confident. I have more energy. I'm connecting with people. And I'm finding uh, that I'm doing better at my job. And so he removed this barrier of the extra weight, and it helped him connect and create more relationships. So part of connecting is really finding out you know, what's holding you back. The next thing that I found is really important is surrounding yourself with people that are actually passionate about what you're doing. My God, my clicker is going really fast. I'm going to have to speed up this talk. Um, surround yourself with people that are passionate. But if you don't know what you're passionate about, how can you clearly identify that and, and communicate it to people? <laughs> Kevin Bacon, what did he, what's he doing in here? So Kevin Bacon, we've all heard about six degrees of separation. Well, we're lucky. Things are evolving because of technology. And we're actually down to four degrees on a global level. So we've moved from six degrees to four degrees. 
But the good news is on a community level, so let's say your fitness lovers, we're down to three degrees. On a niche level, we're down to two degrees of separation. So if there are kite surfers out here, if you, you know, raise your hands if you're a kite surfer, you're probably connected to each other, probably only by one degree of separation. So there's a lot that's happening because of technology that's increasing our ability to connect. Here's me. Um, Talking about how things can change, I was on my way to Budapest recently, a very random place that you would likely not go, except for me, I was speaking there. I made a post on my Facebook page and I said, does anyone know somebody in Budapest? Where should I go? What should I do there? I know there are these spa baths, but what else is going on in Budapest? Within 24 hours, I had all these posts and a friend of mine, Peter, said, Oh, I know the ambassador to Budapest. I'll see if she'll have lunch with you. <clears throat> so here's Alini. I can't say her last name. It's the longest Greek name in history. I thought about writing it on my hand so I could read it, but I ended up 48 hours later having lunch with Alini. Uh, I went to the embassy. We got in a motorcade, and I thought, this is surreal. I'm in a motorcade with the ambassador. She took me to the Four Seasons. We had duck confit, and uh, it was lovely. <laughs> so, again, technology is changing the rate at we, which we connect and our ability to bring people together. Another thing that's happening, and I can't take credit for this, it's really Steven Pinker, who's an author and also a researcher, um, the circle of empathy and the way that we connect with people has also greatly changed. So think about in the past, when you would think about relationships and connections, your th image of a person might have been the last time you saw them at a dinner party. Now, because of technology and also because of reading about history and literature and all sorts of things, our last impression of somebody might be a tweet, might be a post. For example, <clears throat> um, I have a contact who lives here in Larkspur. I went to high school with her. I haven't seen her since high school, but I know that she's been to Tahoe. I know that her parents are looking for a house. Uh, I know everything about her kids, and that's our circle of empathy is getting larger and larger. So in the past, our core circle was really our families, maybe a, a smaller group than that, but now it's getting wider and wider and wider. And what's happening is because of this, people actually in the center of these networks tend to be happier. James Fowler, who wrote a book called Connected, was interviewed on NPR recently, and he talked about the reason that we start to feel happier is because you can start to feel the waves of happiness that are flowing through these networks. <clears throat> Here's an example, again, of how technology is changing things. Here in the picture, we've got Vivian Greentree. She's with Michelle Obama, and uh, Vivian happens to be a military mom. Her husband, Mike, has been deployed four times in the last years. And what she does with the kids, she does Mike on a stick. So that's Mike, her husband. And they constantly are sending pictures and images while Mike is away. I, last night, of course, was obsessing about this speech, and I thought, maybe I should do Porter on a stick and ask everybody who's going on vacation to take me with you. Uh, maybe I'll relate to your vacation moments. <clears throat> Um, one thing that I have recommended to people that I've worked with in companies is that actually doing an exercise where you figure out, well, what do I care about? And I've called it the funnel test, where you basically streamline your passions, you figure out what your purpose is, but it gives you a way that you can actually connect to people. Some of you might be thinking, what is this? It, it might look like the famed Burning Man, but it actually... I was thinking about, well, where do people really connect? It's when they're in groups and they're passionate. This is actually an image of an Airstreamer convention. <laughs> I went to an Airstreamer convention. I don't think it was this one, but they referenced my bike trip across the country. And I went to this Airstreamer convention, and again, thinking about connecting. When you bring people with like-minded interests together, you can connect much more authentically. So at an Airstreamer convention, there was the bonsai group, there was the knitting group, there was even the spam cooking group, which is the one that I ended up with, so I ate a lot of spam sandwiches. But the point is, is that when we bring communities together, if you can figure out authentically what your interests are, you're gonna have better connections. Oddly, the Airstreamer group also looks like Burning Man. 
So the point is, is that there is community happening all around us. You just have to find the ones that are most interesting and relevant to you. Huh, a quote that I just wanted to bring up. I am not the baseball historian, but a friend of mine was saying this to me the other day. He said, luck is a residue of design. And I thought a lot about that relevant to connecting. And what it meant to me was really, a lot of people will say, oh, that was just luck that I met that person, or it was luck that it happened. But actually, it's really an output of our desire to make our networks bigger. For me, when I made my network bigger, I had more productivity, greater happiness, I was closing deals, and it was because I was open to connecting. The last concept that I just want to bring out there, this was also brought up by Van, but I do think that there is a question that we need to ask ourselves, and it's, are we a consumer or are we a producer? Being a producer is someone that's adding to the society. It could be anything from blogging, it could be cooking, it could be making apps, it could be making software, but it's adding to the greater collective. So I feel that authentically connecting with people, if you take a producer mindset instead of a consumer mindset, you're more likely to connect with others and build your network or your social capital. <clears throat> so in closing, um, what I want to say is that in this economy, because of technology and also a lot of the changes that are happening, if you invest in your social capital and you constantly are adding to it, you're going to have a greater success, greater chance at happiness, more productivity. And so I encourage all of you to connect. Because I like to bring groups of people together, I know that I'm not going to be able to meet all 700 of you, but Janine and I, we did want to do a quick giveaway. So one of the people I advise is Michael Mina, the chef. For four random people, I hope you're going to be excited about this, but you get to go out to dinner with me. So look <laughs> under your chairs. Uh, whoever, there's four envelopes. It will be a dinner at Michael Mina with Janine and myself, and the goal will be to have a great random conversation. So if you have one, please wave your hand if you found an envelope. One over there, yay. My next dinner companion. Got one, two. There should be four. There might, oh, there's lots of empty seats. Well, if you guys are scavengers and you want to check the empty seats, you can do that too. So I look forward to meeting you. My email is in the envelope. So we've got three, four. So we will have a nice dinner with Michael Mina and with Janine. So thank you for your time.